Hi there, I'm Christine the Gemini Stitcher and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a regular viewer you will know that last week I was on a cruise so this week's Monday Makes and Plans is going to be a little bit different because it's all going to be about plans because I sure as heck did not take my sewing machine on a cruise ship last week. But what I'm also going to do is share my cruise experience and a few pics at the end. So if you want to continue watching after I've shown you what I'm making next week, then stay on the channel and we'll cruise together. So first up are a couple of fabrics that arrived while I was away, which is always great to come back to when you've been on a holiday. If there's fabric to open, it all feels a little bit better. So these are from Rainbow Fabrics. I've been really good and only ordered two fabrics from them, which is unusual. There's usually a big parcel when I get on their site, but I'm trying to be more conscious with my fabric and pattern purchases for the rest of this year. So we may not see as many new fabrics and more from my lovely stash being used up, fingers crossed. Anyway, the first fabric is black. Not me, I know. But bear with me. I'll try and get it close enough so you can see. Oh, there we go. You can see if it shines. It is a viscose jacquard and it's got, if you can see, a leopard print on it. Now, I'm trying to plan ahead now. I've had my holidays and I'm trying to be a bit more conscious with, with the fabrics that I'm buying. I've got loads of summer fabrics. I definitely don't need any more. So I'm trying to think ahead to autumn. And I was thinking that this would make a fabulous pair of trousers or clots. Not sure on the pattern yet. So if anybody's got any ideas, then let me know. So that's the first fabric that I got. And then, oh no, I can't not go bright, can I? Get your sunglasses on. Because look at that. Is that bright pink or what? What do we think? Pink isn't normally, bright pink is not normally my colour. But I just could not resist it. Now this is a viscose crepe. It's fairly thin. Let's have a look how drapey it is. Yeah. So I was thinking of making a long sleeve blouse to go with. Try and put them together for you. The black jacquard collots. So when I'm ordering fabrics, I'm either looking in my stash, have I got something that will go with it and make a full outfit, or I'm looking for something that will go with it when I'm ordering and trying to make full outfits, not just random garments that don't go with anything. So that's my purchases from Rainbow. But they're obviously for the autumn to brighten it up, so I won't be doing them anytime soon. The other thing that arrived while I was away, and yet again, I'm late to the party, but I'm going to open it with you anyway. It's the Think Pink subscription box. Not all of you will have seen this. I've tried, in all honesty, not to watch other people's opening videos, but failed miserably. So I have got an idea what's in this box, but it's always nice to open it together, isn't it? So get this baby open. Sharp scissors, no messing about here. Oh, I love the fact that these don't come in a plain brown boring but you get something that you can use. I'm using these on my shelves. When I've got a shelf full they're all labelled up with what's inside I'll show you because they look, you know, they will look amazing. So I've got, at the moment, I've got one with all my uh, jersey cuffings in and I've got one with all my interfacings in. So it's tidying things up for me anyway because 
my sewing room gets into a real mess. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Think pink subscription box from beyond the pink door. This is my third box. When I've opened this, I'll show you what I've made with my other two boxes. Just so you can see, I am keeping on top of these. If it starts getting overwhelmed by them, then I'll stop buying them. But I am enjoying the fabrics. And I'm enjoying making new things in fabrics I wouldn't choose. I'll just show you that little label that they've put on. It says, knock, knock, open me. Oh, I love all the little labels and things they put on them. It's just so me. Oh, it's all yellow. So, May Soulscription Box 16. Thank you for your purchase of one of our Think Pink Soulscription Boxes. This month's box contains two metres of Lady McElroy Cotton Lawn. There are two colours available this month. Wish you fun opening your box. And you get, I'm covering the QR code up because, you know, sad people out there would love to look at it. So you get a QR code that takes you to Andrea from Beyond the Pink Doors little video and suggestions of what you can make and she shows you what she's made with the fabric, which is a great starting point. So what I do is look at the fabrics and all the little bits in the box. Then I go away and watch the video. And then I come back and say, let you know what Andrea has suggested and what I think quick sticks I'm going to make. It invariably never ends up being what I say in these videos, but it sets my mind going. So it's all wrapped up in beautiful tissue paper with a Beyond the Pink Door sticker. The attention to detail is amazing with it. It's just delicious. So much. Looking good. So, little card that you get, you always get, says, when life gives you lemons, add salt and tequila. Not a lover of tequila, to be honest. It gives me a blinding headache. And then there are two colourways of this fabric. And I can see which one I've got. It's the one I wanted. So, but I'm going to save the best till last. We've got some white thread. Which isn't Gutterman's, actually. It's a Mettler. Yeah, right, that's a new thread to me. Let's see how that works. I usually get Gutterman's. Interesting. Oh, what are these? Lemon and lime wax melts. Oh, I have a couple of the lamps that these go in, so they're going to go really well. In fact, I might want to plug one in, in here. When I'm sewing, we'll have the smell of lemons as well. You can smell it through the wrapping. It's going to be amazing. Oh, what else is there? Oh, some shearing elastic. Never have enough shearing elastic, most people. With me, you'll know that my one experience of using it failed miserably. So this might encourage me to actually try it again. Not sure. I need to, I do need to bottom that because I love dresses with shearing elastic in. They look stunning. I need to figure it out once and for all, don't I, girls? Then... Oh, I've got another little packet that says squeeze the day. Love it, love it. And then inside, we have got the lemon patch woven sewing labels. Oh, let's open these up. I'm getting into labels in my clothes. I never used to put them in. But I do think that I should make more of an effort. And these are well cute. Wow, there's a lot of them. Do they all say the same thing? You're the best. Yes, they do. My little lemon. You're the best. And there's one, two, 
three, four, five of them. Oh, and they're actually the double labels, which are great for sewing into seeds, aren't they? Now, the ones I've got are all flat labels, but they're going to be easier to sew in, so maybe I will actually use them. Definitely put one in the garment that I'm making with this fabric. So, the fabric. Oh, it feels oh, beautiful. Let's open it up. It is a cotton lawn by Lady McElroy. Oh, my goodness. And look at that. Stunning, stunning lemons. Now, I've seen a few lemon fabrics and I felt they looked a bit cheap and tacky, if I'm honest. But this stuff, oh my goodness, looks amazeballs. What do we think of that? I could have so done with this for my holes, couldn't I? Oh, swishing around on my cruise in a lemon dress with lemons on it. But never mind, the summer has still got a long way to go and it's a glorious day outside today. So I need to get this in the wash and decide what I'm going to make with it. So I'm going to bob off and watch Andrea and then I'll come back, let you know what she's making. And I'll have had a little think about what I want to use this gorgeous fabric for. See you in a minute. I'm back. Wow. Andrea has given me so many ideas. Phenomenal. Thanks, Andrea. The biggest thing I've taken away from her video is that it is going to work best, this fabric. Just grab it again. With a vintage style pattern which I hadn't thought about and I thought I was just thinking sundresses but you've opened it up Andrea and made my mind go mad. One of the ideas that she had was as I said vintage style and I recently purchased when it was on offer the Sew Over It Summer Dreaming ebook which has got quite a few beautiful summer vintage vibe patterns in it so I'm definitely making something from that book and it's either going to be I've got them written down here on my iPad so that I don't forget it's either going to be the Alba skirt put an image of it there and I was thinking of doing it with the ruffle very daring for me. I don't do ruffles. So I thought, push myself really out of my comfort zone, do the Alba skirt and do it with the ruffle. Now it's a wrap skirt. So I'm hoping that even though this fabric is a little bit see-through with the sun behind it, because it is a wrap, it will work fine. No lining. Perfect. Or the other thing that I'll... Other... Other thing... The other garment that I like in the e-dreaming book is the Ravello dress. But I don't know if I've got enough fabric for this. So there's the Ravello dress. Would look stunning in it though, wouldn't it? I have to have a think. And then the third thing from the Summer Dreaming e-book are the... It's called the Porto jumpsuit. There's the Porto jumpsuit. But you can also just do the trousers. So I was thinking I could do the if it's not see the fabric might be too see-through for me to make trousers with or pants. But if I'll have a think. I like the idea of doing the pants from the Porto jumpsuit and making it with a little top of some kind and doing a cord but there is only two meters of fabric so i have to see but i'm buzzing about it <laughs> okay so that's my think pink subscription box opening for the month of may so that's it really for my monday makes and plans to do with sewing if you want to know a little bit about my cruise that i've recently been on stay on if not I'll see you next time. So the cruise I went on was called the Adriatic Affair with Morella Cruises, which is part of the Tui Group. 
I've never been on a cruise before, so I had nothing to compare it to. And I had an amazing time. The ports that we went to were, we flew to Dubrovnik. And then we sailed out of Dubrovnik and went to Ravina. I'm looking at them here because I can't remember them all. It's all a bit of a blur. So the ports we stay docked in. Basically, we sailed overnight and then docked in. Woke up in the morning and we were somewhere new, which was great. There was only one sea day. And lucky for us, the sea day was phenomenally sunny which was great because the day before it had rained. We had one day of rain, which was not too bad. It was still quite warm, but that day, you know, puts a bit of a dampener on it, doesn't it? But I could cope with one day. Some people who'd gone in April and early May, weather has been absolutely weird, hasn't it? And they had a week of rain. Imagine that on a cruise. So we flew into Dubrovnik and we sailed to Ravina in Italy. We went to Trieste in Italy. We went to Coppa in Slovenia, Split in Croatia, uh, Kotor for Montenegro. That was my favourite place. It was amazing. And back to Dubrovnik. So the first place we sailed to was Croatia, Split. And the first day there, well, the second day, really, first day in Dubrovnik, we were absolutely shattered. I didn't go around Dubrovnik. Our flight was delayed. Uh, we waited nearly two hours for our luggage at Dubrovnik Airport, so be aware of that. Baggage reclaim is a nightmare there. There's just one carousel that just winds its way around the whole of the baggage reclaim area. Fools you into thinking there's a load of different ones, but there isn't. It's all the same one. Our flight was late and there were three other flights all came in at the same time and it was chaos. Morella don't do bonded luggage for the Eastern Med from Dubrovnik on the way out so you've got to collect your own cases. Once we got on the coach everything was fine. People had said that going through the port passport control was an absolute nightmare and took hours took us probably about 15 minutes never even really an issue after everything else we'd been through but after all that I couldn't face walking in the heat round Dubrovnik so we stayed on the ship so day two was to split in Croatia and that was the one place I wanted to do a organised trip because I wanted to go to the National Park and see the waterfalls. can't pronounce the name of it, so I'll bob it underneath. And I'm going to disappear now and show you some amazing pictures of this National Park. It was about an hour's drive from Split, and I'm so glad we did it. So sit back and enjoy the view. Day two was a beach day at Ravina, so I haven't got any photos of that because me in a bikini is not something you want to see, believe you me. So we took a short ferry journey to Ravina Marina, where the beach area is, and there were lots of cafes and bars and a few shops and a lovely beach. So we went over there and had a nice relaxing morning on the beach and then headed back to the ship for more sunbathing and got ourselves our head straight after two busy days really it was nice to have a relaxing day day three we went to trieste italy i've got some pics for you it was a really interesting port town to go around some great shops so if you're into shops and a bit of mooch then they had some lovely shops to look around lovely squares and piazzas and a canal that went through or a river I think it was a river it looked like a canal to me 
that ran through the centre of the town and just stunning. So here's a few pics of Trieste. <laughs> Well, day four was our rain day. We docked in Copper, Slovenia, and I've just got, I think, one photo, which isn't worth showing you because it didn't take out very well at all. It was really, really torrential rain. I am so glad that I took my waterproof jacket with me because I had it on all day. We spent most of the day, we went round the old town because you've got to go and do your sightseeing. People who stayed on the ship, I thought, were a little bit silly. The rain did stop. So as soon as it stopped, we hopped off the ship, straight into the town. You could walk there and the old town was beautiful. There's also a big shopping centre because it started absolutely tanking it down again. So we went into their version of our Trafford Centre in Manchester and had a wander around there and then went back to the ship and spent most of the day in the bar or the coffee port shop because it just was not a good day at all. The deck was absolutely swimming with water and I, the next day was going to be our sea day and I was scared stiff. If we had a day at sea which was rough and raining, I don't know what I would have done. But as I've already said, the next day was our sea day and it was brilliant sunshine. So no pics of the sea day because it was a bikini day and again you don't want to see me in that. But I will pop a few pics now of what I wore in the evenings because I'd taken quite a few me made outfits with me. So sit back and have a look at those. <music> So our final port was Cotor for Montenegro. Oh my goodness. Saving the best till last is a bit of an understatement because we got up at 5am in the morning. Luckily we had a balcony cabin to watch the, I was going to say drive, sail into port. You don't drive a ship, do you? The sail into port because it like goes through it's like a, a fjord with mountains either side and you, the skill involved in docking that ship in those shallow waters, I was so in awe. So I got myself a brew, sat out on the balcony, Nick stayed in bed and I sat there and just watched in the peace and the quiet coming in to the harbour. It was phenomenal. I'll pop a few pics at the end of this and then you can see the end of our cruise. When we got off the ship in Montenegro in Kotor, Nick had decided that he wanted to get up. You can walk up to the highest point, which is Kotor Castle, and there are over 9,000 steps to get up not the most even, wear sensible shoes if you ever do this. I am fessing up, I did not get right to the top. It was an extremely hot day. We were there early, we got off the ship at nine o'clock and went straight up to do it before it got too hot and it was horrendous. I have never felt so unfit in my entire life. I will show you some pics. Nick did get right to the top, not me. I just thought, I have done all I need to do. And it was the top, but then you just thought, oh, it's only a few, is it? It's only a few more steps. And when I looked and it looked up, I have taken a picture, tried to get a photo of him walking up. I'm not sure he's even on it, but you'll get the idea. I had already done about 8,000 steps. And then there were another there was no way it was only 9,000 steps. It was definitely more. And then we had to walk all the way down. So the next day, which was the day that we docked to come home, my calf muscles were absolutely killing. 
but it was so worth it. So that was my cruise. Watch out a few pics of the Cotor. And I will see you probably, I think, Wednesday or Thursday this week because what I'm thinking of doing is doing a sewing plan for the month of June or the rest of the month of June and then bob on to my weekly ones to give you an update of where I'm up to with it. So happy sewing everybody, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.